Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and this week we're building some essential oil storage that can hide behind the door. Let's roll the intro and get to work. The engineer's latest obsession is essential oils. So today we're gonna to build her some shelving so that she's got a place to store them all. I'm using good old select pine and our first step is to cut them to length. This is a great beginner project and can be adapted to store a lot of different things. You can keep it simple or make it a little more complicated like I'm doing here. I would call this project a skill builder. I started with 64 mil wide pine and I cut two sticks at 1.2 meters long and 10 sticks at 421 mils. Now I hear you, why so particular about 421 mil? This is because the shelf is designed to fit exactly 16 bottles of the particular oils that the engineer uses. With all of my pieces cut to length, I'm now at the part where I'm going to cut dados into my side pieces. I've taped the two side pieces together because this will mean that my dados will come out to be in exactly the same spot on both the pieces. I'm going to do this using the table saw with my cross cut sled, but you could 100% do this using a router. This is just where I feel like I'm going to be most accurate. I've got my table saw blade set to be eight mil above my cross cut sled and we're ready to cut the dados. On the back of this project, I think a jig to add to the build list is a quick router jig to make measuring and cutting dados super quick and easy. The table saw did work well and got the job done, but learning for next time. With the dados cut in the side pieces, I can turn my attention to the shelves. Now I want to be able to hold the oils in place, but also see through to know which oil is which. So to do that, I'm going to use a clear perspex and I'm going to cut a dado in each of the shelves to hold the perspex in place. I've set up the table saw to do so and I've run through my test piece to make sure that my settings are dialed in. A little tip for you, if you have a scrap piece of wood that is the same material that you're using, take it along in the project with you and run all of your cuts through first on your test piece to dial in your settings. That way, if you make a mistake, you can make it on the test piece instead of on the real thing. Now that I've got everything set up correctly, let's go ahead and cut some more dados. I'm using three mil perspex, so with two quick passes on each piece, the dado is cut. The dado is set 10 mil in from the front. You can cut perspex on any tool, however I would recommend purchasing a plastic cutting blade for the tool you're using. The perspex will have an exposed edge and the finish is far superior with no chip out compared to a wood blade. I've got the shelving sitting dry fitted together and now I can cut everything to final depth. I've waited up until this point to do this because I wanted to take a real life measurement to make sure that the oils were going to fit in behind the perspex. I've worked out in order to comfortably get the oils in and out, I need to allow 30 mil behind the perspex. So now that I've got that number, I can go ahead and make those final cuts and then we can cut a rebate into the side panels to accept the back panel. I'm using 12mm plywood for the backer piece as it will be screwed to the wall so this means the cabinet will have decent strength. It was then time to get ready for the stressful glue up. The challenge here is to line everything up and not take all day as I'm working against the clock of the glue. The dados make it a little easier as everything slots into place and it holds itself together.
I sanded and painted the back panel white and also applied two coats of poly on the shelves. A little trick if you have some gaps in your dados, take some glue and spread it into the crack, then sand straight over it. The wet glue will mix with the sawdust and it will fill the crack and no one will ever know. I secured the back panel to the shelves and it was ready to hang on the wall. I'm using four wall mates to hang it onto the wall, which will be plenty to hold it up. I drilled through the back panel into the wall to mark where the wall mates needed to go. With the wall mates installed, I could simply secure it to the wall, remove the things holding it up, and see if it fell down. The oil storage is all on the wall, but it's missing one thing. We need some oils. Now the oils have a home and they are seamlessly tucked behind the door but you can still easily access them. So I hope you have liked this video. If you have, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you on the next one.